Hello and welcome, Aquarister here, coming to you with another video, and today we are shaking it up a bit. Uh, many of you know that I am primarily a life staff main, but I have been tanking on the side a bit for some dungeons, and figured I'd share what I have learned with all of you. Uh, so today we're talking about great sword tanking specifically, since we're kind of on a great sword roll. We've really been enjoying the weapon itself. And I've been wanting to work it into my tanking role since I've been kind of transitioning into some tanking as well as healing. Um, so I thought I would share what I've learned with all of you and uh, kind of what's been working for me. Obviously, everyone's going to be a little different with their play style, with what they prefer out of their build. I'm just going to share with you what's been working for me, what I've had fun with and enjoying. So I hope you enjoy the build. Um, let's get into the gear to start it off with so we can kind of see what I've been running. All right, so looking at the armor here, I'm currently wearing my Corrupt Ward fit. Uh, I do recommend for anyone for dungeons, especially mutated dungeons specifically, whether you're a DPS tank or a healer, having the ward gear will keep you alive a lot longer um, and make the, easy, make the dungeons a little bit easier, go a little bit smoother for you. Uh, so currently, like I said, I'm wearing my full Corrupt Ward set, so each of these will have a Corrupt ward piece on it uh, it does reduce your corrupt uh, damage by five percent per piece so that is a pretty big reduction uh, in damage from the corrupt side of things uh, for jewelry i am wearing the tempest amulet which you do get i believe you get for free through either a quest or a cash or something like that uh, pretty decent for tanking uh, the only thing that I would maybe switch up is I would probably try to get the same amulet as my uh, healer fit. So that would be health, divine, and fortified. This one has health, fortified, and stamina recovery. I do usually like to run divine with my tanking uh, fit, but I don't really have a good amulet right now that fits in for what I'm wanting out of it. Uh, so the only other perk that I would recommend would be Divine, maybe instead of the Stamina Recovery. Um, I like having the Fortified personally, so that's definitely something to think about as far as your amulet goes. But again, this has been working great for me. Uh, for my ring, I'm still using Smoothbone Ring, so I do get the Hardy, which is nice, Keen Awareness, and then the Leeching, which I do utilize the Leeching quite a bit with this build. Um, takes a little bit of stress off of the healer, allows me to kind of tank some stuff by myself if the healer does have to focus other things. So having the leeching I have enjoyed and smooth bone ring is easy to get uh, for any of you. The earring that I've been using is actually one of the newer earrings that came out called Titanic Strength and it has Nimble, Despised, and Purifying Toast. Now if you don't have this earring but you do have Black Metal Stud, Black Metal Stud is a really, really good option. Uh, you're really just trading the Nimble for the Refreshing, so some might even prefer the Refreshing over the Nimble. Uh, I like the Nimble. The extra Stam Regen is really nice, so that's why I go with that. But you do have your options of, of either one, really. Uh, Purifying Toast, though, I do highly recommend because it is awfully nice to be able to pop a Regen Potion and get rid of a debuff on yourself. Uh, as far as the shield goes, this is what I've been using. I am using Fortifying Shield Rush because that is a 33% fortification um, from, from hitting just a single target even. Uh, so it's really, really nice because you can pretty much hit your fortification cap just instantly with that. Uh, and, and that will keep you alive quite a bit longer than, than if you didn't have it. Um, Sure footing, move a little bit faster while blocking, refreshing evasion, get that cooldown, and then sturdy energy um, when blocking a hit while below 30%. So the only thing that I would say I'm missing on here would be having the sturdy perk. Uh, it reduces your stam damage by about 10%. But, you know, with this build, I haven't really found that I've needed a whole lot because I'm running it with greatsword. Uh, so with Greatsword, I can kind of get away without having Sturdy, and I'll kind of show you why in a little bit. But that's what I'm running for a shield. Uh, I do have some other shields that I can swap in and out depending on what I need, but that's kind of the, the go-to for me currently. For a sword, uh, like I said with the Smooth Bone Ring, I am using Leeching, so I wanted to run Omen for now. Uh, eventually, I would like to get a refreshing move sword uh, with a good combination of other perks that would really allow me to get my cooldowns even faster um, just with my light and heavy attacks. But the lifesteal is so good out of this. I've just kind of been using it. It's worked great. 
no complaints uh, as far as using Omen. So if you do have Omen or, or something like that, Curiosity Greed even would work fine just from a uh, from a threat standpoint. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been using for a sword. It's worked just fine for me. Uh, like I said, Refreshing Move is kind of the one perk that I'm looking for now. For my great sword, this is currently what I have for my Corrupt Bane great sword. I do have an Angry Earth one as well. Um, but I actually crafted this uh, day one and tried to sell it, didn't sell it, so I ended up keeping it. And what we got is Corrupt Bane, Shirking Arcane, and Trenchant Rend. So I will say the Shirking Arcane, it seems like Shirking is better now. Uh, I was actually able to get it to trigger consistently, whereas in previously or previous to this patch, uh, I, I couldn't seem to like consistently get the shirking uh, arcane or shirking anything to really trigger that easily. And now it seems to actually be triggering properly. So the shirking arcane seems to work really well, plus the trenchant rend able to apply those rends, you know, a stack of rend. Um, is really, really nice for the bosses as well. So it is an extra stack that we can add to it. But that's the gear that I'm currently running. Uh, like I said, I tweak things here and there. So what you're seeing here and what you see what I run may be slightly different depending on the situation, the dungeon, all of that. Um, but that's kind of the fun of this game is it allows us to switch things up, change it up, you know, not be stuck in one class. So it's really cool that what works for one might not work for another, but might work you know just fine so it, it's really really cool the way that the builds work in this game and that's why i'm just sharing what i have fun with my builds with you guys so we got the armor we got the weapons the last thing we're going to go over is the heart rune now i've been running two different heart runes i've been running grasping vines which has enfeebling vines and rending vines and i've also been running the detonate I know a lot of people are running detonate and it is a really nice ability to be able to have the extra damage output and all that but as a tank i've been running grasping vines reason for that is because not only with my corrupt bane sword do i have the trenchant rend but i can also apply the rending vines it does hurt my stam regen for five seconds but in those five seconds usually i'm applying the 14 percent rend by a 20 percent rend and then we just go crazy on it. You know, I'm not really worrying about my stam in terms of blocking. We just go crazy for those five seconds and then I go back to defensive. And the nice thing is since it has enfeebling vines, you're applying a weaken. So that lack of stamina, you know, uh, regeneration is kind of made up for for the lack of damage output that the enemy's doing. So you're not really finding that you're having to block as much or you can maybe absorb more just by swinging on them. Uh, so that's kind of my go-to is is the grasping vines. I've really really enjoyed the rending vines and enfeebling vines uh, for tanking, especially. It's it seems like it works really really good. But next, let's take a look at the attributes that I've been running, um, and kind of some of the options that you can run for attributes with this build. Looking at attributes, you have a few different options uh, based around kind of how comfortable you are tanking, how comfortable your healer might be, um, which dungeon you're doing, all of that. So first, we'll just start out with our 250-250. So with this setup here, with Khan being at 234, strength being at at least two, what is it, 226 to 226 or up. Um, this actually allows us to eat carrot cake, which gives us 16 con, 24 strength. So at 16 con, that puts us up to 250 con. So then we end up getting the minus 60% damage reduction while, fi while full health. Um, kind of nice for like a boss fight if we just take a massive amount of damage. Um, but it does give us that extra health, which is really, really nice. And then it gives us the 24 in strength, which will put us over the 250 mark. Um, gives us stam regen, is faster while performing basic attacks with a melee weapon. So that's really, really nice because then we get that faster uh, stam regen. Plus we have nimble on our earring. So we're kind of stacking our, our stam regen pretty, pretty good there. So this particular setup is what I run when I am... You know, maybe I know I'm going to be taking more damage, but I still want to, you know, have enough strength to be able to deal some damage. That's when I'll run something like this. But if I know I'm going to be more defensive, like for Tempest, 
this is kind of what I run for Tempest, especially if I don't know the healer and, you know, if I know we have some newer people and I might have to hold aggro or something longer, uh, I too typically will run a little bit higher con. In general, I do like to run around 200 con though, if possible. And in that case, I'll just run a straight 200 con, everything else in strength, and then I'll take a full strength food, whether that be, uh, you know, whether that be a 33 con or 33 strength, 40 strength, whatever. Um, you can kind of work your attributes out based around what foods you have available, uh, because obviously we could also do carrot cake here to get to 200 and just do, what would it be, 184? right here and then everything else into strength and then pop a carrot cake that would get us up to uh, where we need to be for the 200 so you definitely have some options i do recommend going at least 200 con though as a tank because you get the extra uh, 10 percent increase to your physical and elemental armor so your survivability just goes up a lot um, so if you can hit at least 200 that's where i've been running it primarily outside of the few runs where i'm going higher into the 250s I don't really go past 250 myself. Um, I do know of tanks that have done that. It's just, I think having a little extra strength as a tank allows us to uh, just take down the bosses a little bit quicker and just clear some of the, the ads a little bit quicker, but definitely pick what you're most comfortable with and play around with it. A lot of it just comes down to, you have to try it, have to play. Um, you might even be shifting mid dungeon to try to, you know, increase your damage output. I know sometimes tanks for like Lazarus, will quick respec at the end and go lower health and just go higher strength and you can just burn it through charges quickly i don't typically do that just because usually our group has enough dps but i have seen it done so that's kind of where we're at with attributes it's fairly open as long as you're hitting the right amount of con and then kind of everything else going into strength but next we are going to look at our mastery and we'll look at the sword and shield, but primarily we will be looking at great sword since that is kind of the new weapon. I've been enjoying it with tanking. So let's go take a look at what I got for the build. All right, so briefly looking at our sword and shield build, you can see that I have primarily stuck to the defender side. Um, the sword and shield is my defense weapon. It is what's going to kind of keep me alive, allow me to give the healer some time to get their cooldowns back and kind of gather themselves if need be. Uh, we're running, you know, to Defender's Resolve, Shield Rush, and Shield Bash. I do like to run Shield Bash because it is an extra it is an extra taunt. So it allows me to, you know, if our healers run around and there's an ad stuck on them, DPS can't get them off, I can just run up Shield Bash, go right back to the group, and that ad will follow me. Uh, so that's why I like really like running Shield Bash. It does work really well for myself. The one thing that I got rid of is Intimidating Rush. We don't really need the slow applied to most enemies, so I replaced that with Empowered Stab. So at least with our heavy attacks, we can increase our damage output by quite a bit with our Sword and Shield, uh, even as the tank. So that's just kind of the general layout of what I run for Sword and Shield. Pretty straightforward, primarily on the defensive side. It's just what I've been having fun with, what I've enjoyed. Uh, so kind of see how it works for you, but it is gonna be more on the defensive side of things. Looking at the greatsword now, I'm running the full defiance side for the abilities, but we are still going to be running aggressive shift so we can enable our onslaught stance when we need to, or just when we're laying down some DPS in general. Uh, on the onslaught side as well, we're running heavy blades. So our charge heavy attacks have 15% armor penetration, which we needed regardless to get through here. Keen Posture, very, very nice ability. So after you trigger your Onslaught Stance, your next attack within five seconds has 100% critical hit chance. And that does apply to your Roaring Rupture. So let's say we get into a group and you're trying to grab aggro, lead with a heavy, followed up by a Rupture. It'll pull everything into you uh, because you'll be in Onslaught Stance at that point and that pull will be a guaranteed critical hit. So you're critical hitting every single thing in that area while taunting them and, and grouping them. So it's a really, really nice ability to and perk to have uh, and then the critical comeback become energized by landing a critical hit and regain five stamina and five percent base health per second for five seconds so when our base health is like fourteen thousand five percent is quite a bit and for five seconds that's not bad ten percent cooldown not terrible because we are landing crits pretty often with the uh, great sword so again as a tank really really good perk to have because the stam and the health regen i mean why not have it 
looking at the defiance side we are running the three abilities over here calamity counter if you are tanking with this weapon uh even as a healer to be honest i do recommend calamity counter because you can block just about anything with it um obviously if you're getting hit from behind it won't block behind you you have to be looking at it uh, but definitely 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 necessary to have as a tank because you can block you can block just i think you can block just about any of the bosses from what i've seen so far um as far as like the the melee attacks anything like that because i've had neshertune roll across the arena at me and slap me while i'm in calamity counter and nothing happened it was great so i do recommend uh rocking calamity counter with your great sword roaring rupture is going to be your taunt with your great sword um, it will actually taunt them. Uh, we do have the pull. It'll cleanse two debuffs and it'll also weaken. So it's a really, really, really good ability um, all around PV and actually even PVP. But as a tank, since we're talking about tanks, uh, it is going to be your main taunt as your greatsword, uh, as well as grouping with the onslaught stance. The last ability that we're running is Steadfast Strike. And I was very unsure of Steadfast Strike, right? Um, I know a lot of people will run one Onslaught ability, and I myself was going to run an Onslaught ability as well. But looking further into Steadfast Strike, and now after using it a bit, I've grown to very much like this, uh, this, this ability. So looking at just the ability itself, stab your greatsword through forward to impale your foes and pull back to rip the blade out. So when we do that, for each hit, we are gaining 20 stam. So the nice thing is, is let's say I have to dodge, dodge, you know, double dodge to avoid an attack. I can then go into a steadfast strike, immediately get 20 stam right where it is. If it lands as a crit, then I'm getting five stam per second on top of that. So that's 25 stam there per second for five seconds, another 20. So you're up to 45 stam. You're pretty much at another dodge. You know what I mean? So you're, you're, you're building up those dodges. Uh, and, and on top of that, you know, you have... Uh, potentially a void circle if you have a healer with you all that that can increase your stam output or regeneration i should say uh, the other cool thing is you also are uh, generating 150 percent threat so even though it's not a taunt per se uh, i have used it like a taunt where i will actually chase down an ad hit them with it and it generates enough threat to actually pull them towards me because it actually it does actually pull slightly and then it generates the threat and they'll come after you even though it's not you know even though it's not a taunt it generates enough threat that they it seems like it does work very similar to that uh the first perk underneath that um if the first strike of steadfast strike hits you are healed for 50 percent weapon damage um in defiant stance the first strike also inflicts two stacks of bleeding for six seconds uh, which deals five percent weapon damage every second so i do utilize that for the healing quite a bit as well it's a good chunk of healing plus we have leeching on our smooth bone ring so like i said it, it it's good health you know it's it's good healing good life stealing um and all that plus we have the more health regeneration from this perk again this perk is fantastic the critical comeback because he's paired up with keen posture and you're guaranteed to trigger that uh the last perk of steadfast strike is one of the most important ones if not the most important and that is the cooldown so you actually will re reduce your cooldown by 20 percent of all your other great sword abilities uh, when you're using steadfast strike and land the second strike which most of the time in a dungeon or in pve you're going to land the second strike so it's an easy cooldown uh it's you know it's really really nice because it heals you let's look at all of those it heals it restores stamina it creates threat it causes a bleed and it does a cooldown like this ability kind of does it all it does a lot uh, so i do highly recommend it and then looking at the passives on this side uh, perfect vigilance i've really really liked this perk because it's kind of like an instant 20 percent fortify um, obviously it reduces the, the damage taken but a lot of times i'll run into a fight with my great sword because uh, then if you're at full health uh you reduce the damage taken by 20 percent and then gain a 20 percent. so i'm pretty much like going in full health with my great sword at the start of fight and then instantly getting 20 percent fortify which gives me enough time to either use my other great sword abilities or gives me enough time to switch to my uh sword and shield so i have liked that base damage is increased by three percent for each great sword buff on you that one's just a really nice all-around dps buff to you 
um, just for having a greatsword buff. Uh, charge heavy attacks, have grit, and inflict bleeding for 6 seconds, dealing 5% weapon damage. So again, you know, the grit's really nice, but also we're applying a bleed, which for the big boss is not such a bad thing to be uh, applying more and more damage over time on them. And then the last of the passive perks is the Faultless Defender. I reduce stamina damage by 50% when blocking attacks just after raising your guard or with guard point. Flicks a 5% run for 10 seconds against melee attackers and can stack up to 3 times. So, guard point. Looking at the Defiant Stance side, guard point. Block incoming attacks while charging heavy attacks. So as you're charging up heavy attacks in your Defiant Stance, you actually are blocking incoming attacks. And this allows you to block those incoming attacks by 50% uh, stam, stam damage <laughs> uh, coming in. And then you're also applying a rend if they hit you while you're doing that. So really, really nice perk, literally just for doing nothing but landing a heavy attack and getting hit while you're <laughs> using a heavy. So I have used this. It seems like it works pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's worked. And then we do go with the Undying Defense. So we heal ourselves for 5% of the damage. Uh, from attacks attacking within three seconds of blocking heals for 15 percent of the damage dealt instead so when i believe when we use calamity counter that is a block so within three seconds of that we are healing for 15 percent more if that isn't a block i mean it's still a five percent damage from attacks so you stack that with our leeching and that's pretty good but this is what i've been running for the great sword for my abilities for my perks it is like i said more defensive uh, more tailored around the true tanking of like absorbing damage grabbing aggro all of that while still being able to apply some damage um but really we are here to to support to debuff to buff you know all that stuff um and that's how i've really enjoyed using it now I just want to go over a couple of the abilities just so you have an idea of how to utilize them uh, to the best of your abilities. So obviously a lot of us know the sword and shield. We have our defiant resolve. We have our shield bash and our shield rush. Pretty straightforward our shield rush with our fortifying uh, shield rush. We do get our fortification uh, defiant resolve. We are grabbing aggro. Uh, and then shield bash we're also grabbing aggro and stunning and all that but looking at the great sword with great sword it's a little bit more complicated because we do have the defiant stance as well as the onslaught stance so as it sits we are not currently in a stance so as we swing we're doing about 1100 2000 on a crit in order to trigger our onslaught stance with this build we just need to apply one heavy attack now we're in our stance and as you can see we are hitting for quite a bit more so it's a good good increase in damage i think it's a 15 percent increase but we are also taking 15 percent more damage so you don't want to be sitting in onslaught too much if you know you're going to be taking damage but what we can do is entering a fight you enter in heavy attack and then a roaring rupture will pull those enemies to you on top of that if we follow the roaring rupture after the heavy attack we will also get the guaranteed crit from that so that's how you're going to group stuff you're going to land that heavy and then use that roaring rupture to pull them in show it one more time here do this boom so if it shows red you're in your defiant stance if it's blue you're in your defiant stance when you do that um for calamity counter it really is just a block so as you're timing it let's say the attack comes and you block it you'll sit here for a short period of time and then burst out of it so timing is very important with calamity counter but you will be able to block most anything with it uh, i don't want to say anything and everything but you will block most stuff uh, and then have a counter attack now with the steadfast strike i'm going to show you two different things we're going to show you the cooldown of it um as well as the stamina that you gain so i'm going to just use my abilities here now watch my stam bar and then watch my cooldown ready i'm going to do two so see the cooldown reduction on our abilities as well as our stamina we got a burst of 20 stamina and then by the time we were actually done we were up to enough to be able to dodge again even let's do that one more time i'm going to use a roaring rupture that and then watch i'm going to dodge twice 
see how much stam we got back and then since we landed as a crit as well we're getting our stam regen and we're also getting our uh, health regen for that so using your steadfast strike not only for threat to try to grab some aggro but a lot of times i'm mainly using it as a cooldown a huge cooldown reduction um it's it's really really nice to have it so i do recommend it uh if you like the more defensive side of things for your build this is going to be more of your true tank less of a dps build but still pretty good damage output all right well we made it through the video my first tanking video uh, like i said i'm still kind of getting into tanking i've done it a decent amount now but haven't gotten overly serious until recently uh, the great sword was a pretty big uh, deciding factor into me getting more into tanking so i hope you enjoyed it i hope this build works for you if it doesn't work for you please let me know uh, what changes you've made to the build in order to make it work for your playstyle. because i'm always curious to hear what's working for others based on how they play um, everyone's a little bit different with what we like but that's i think what brings us to new world this game is great we we can change our classes we can change our weapons on the fly we can do any of that uh, you just have to find what works best for you so i hope that this video works for you if it didn't like i said let me know um, what changes you made to the build because uh, i'd be curious to to know what others are running uh, it's always fun to see other builds and and to try new things out but that is going to do it for me for this one so thanks for hanging in there thanks for watching um, if you do have any suggestions for other videos, please let me know. If you did like the video, please drop it a like. It does help me out a lot. If you want to see more, subscribe. I do stream on Twitch throughout the week, so you're always welcome to stop by a stream. We would love to have you. But for now, that is going to do it for me. So until next time, I'll see you later.